I got one. What's going on guys? Stevie here with Lucky Crit, and today I did actually end up picking up a Pokemon Go Plus. They're finally starting to become available again. Um, I'm signed up for a service called Now in Stock, but there's a bunch of other services online that you could sign up for. I'll put a couple in the description down below if you're still interested in trying to get one of these. I have heard that GameStops and Toys R Us's across the United States are starting to stock them, depending on which locations. Um, if you go into GameStop, you can actually ask them to check other stores and their stock. The only problem with that is sometimes they'll tell you, yeah, this one over here has one, but then if you actually call them and ask them about it, usually it's on reserve or on hold for somebody. So definitely be sure to sign up for some of those services because you can get text straight to your phone whenever they're in stock. And then even if you're working or whatever, all you have to do is click on the link that they send you, go on to Amazon or whatever site it may be, GameStop or whatever, log in, add it to your cart, buy it, and you're done. Hopefully before all those copies sell out. But even though there's less of a reason to actually own one of these these days, I still wanted to have one just because I do still appreciate the game and I do think that it will help me out. Especially when it comes to common Pokemon that I don't really care to catch within the game itself. I mean, when it comes to catching like a Rattata or a Pidgey somewhere, I could sit there and waste up to like five Pokeballs trying to catch it. With this thing, it's just an investment of one Pokeball and I either catch it or I don't. And that's it and you can continue along. And I think it will help me a lot when it comes to just stocking up candy and uh, a lot of new catches for transferring or for evolution, so I think that's going to be really good. But uh, definitely be sure to let me know if you have your Pokemon Go Plus, if you're interested in getting one, in the description down below. In today's episode, I just kind of wanted to do a little bit of an update on my account in Pokemon Go. It's been quite a lot more difficult for me to play Pokemon Go lately here on the East Coast in the United States. Um, it's cold outside, I haven't been wanting to go out as much, and when it comes down to it, like, usually I've just hit up the same places around here, which gets kind of boring. So I do agree with some people that want Generation 2 as soon as possible because I do think that it'll drive a lot more people back into the game. But part of me also kind of feels that if they wait till the summer and release it then, we can almost kind of have a repeat of what happened last summer. I don't think as many people will return just because they've already had a taste of what Pokemon Go is actually like and uh, they've already experienced it for themselves, especially a lot of the people that aren't interested in Pokemon to begin with. But I do think that a lot of people would return and get to enjoy it for those summer months and have it be like kind of a Pokemon Go, I guess, second coming. So I do think that'd be really cool because I think if they release it right now, uh, a lot of people on the East Coast are going to be kind of screwed. Maybe maybe they'll go out, maybe they'll drive around and catch Pokemon, I don't really know. But personally, I'm okay with the wait. A lot of people have also been posting online that they want the legendaries, especially before Generation 2 gets dropped. But to be completely honest, like, personally, I'm fine with not receiving the Legendary Trio, the Birds, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres, just because I kind of like having them as the mascots, and having them in-game I think would be kind of weird. But also, when it comes to Legendaries in general, if they do end up doing kind of a sponsorship deal like they did with Starbucks, with another company or something like that, like, I don't know, you know, I joked about it in the trailer spoof that I did, that it would be McDonald's. If they did something like that, I think I really wouldn't want to see Legendaries in the game, just because I don't want to drive around or walk around and see you know, every 10-year-old's Mewtwo, like, spamming up every single gym all across the game, I think. Unless they had the foresight to only allow, like, one Legendary per gym or something like that, I just, I think it would mess with the metagame way too much. Um, and I'm not admitting that the metagame is perfect the way that it is. It could use some tweaks, you know, but at the very least, I like where it is right now, and I don't want to see, you know, Pokemon like Mewtwo just dominate everything. So I'm okay with not having them in the current state unless something good is worked out with that. Because I do honestly believe that we're not going to be seeing city events as they tease in those original Pokemon Go trailers. Just because it's too chaotic and I don't think... I think there'd be legal ramifications and issues and there'd be a lot of crowd swarming, I would imagine. So, um, definitely not getting my hopes up to see legendaries like that. But they could come up with a creative way of, of who knows, making them spawn at Pokestops or something like that. But I just think that would lead to probably too many legendary catches... I don't know. But anyway, let's take a look at where I am in the game. I'm currently level 28. I'm very, very close to reaching that level 29. And I'm currently walking with Porygon just to save up the candies for Porygon 2. Although we did just receive news within the latest app data mine uh, that we will be needing upgrade items in order to actually evolve certain Pokemon. Uh, check out the video up here if you want to learn more about that. Basically, we're going to need the upgrade items that we had in the main series games to evolve a lot of these Pokemon when Generation 2 actually comes out which I find really interesting. So I don't know if it's going to be us trading candy for some of those items or if those items are going to have to be drops. That remains to be seen. But I was saving up candies originally in the hopes of getting to like at least 50 Oregon candies so that I was kind of at least at a decent point. 
So if Porygon 2 was 50 candies to make that evolution, that'd be good. But uh, at this point, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be. Some people wanted to see my Pokedex. Um, 142 caught, 145 seen. I haven't actually made it like my official goal to like complete the North American Pokedex in Pokemon Go. That hasn't been like the driving factor behind me playing the game. So as you can see, I'm not done with the Pokedex. There's definitely a lot that I'm missing. I'm missing Machamp. Uh, I finally got just a wild Machoke. I have the candies for the Machamp, but I've said it in past videos, I'm still waiting for a really good Machop to take all the way to Machamp for that evolution. I'm waiting on Muck. Have the candies for Muck. Obviously, we've got Mr. Mime. And then when it comes down to it, I'm missing uh, Amistar and Kabutops. We just never see those Pokemon around here. If I travel to Stonington Borough or other places in Connecticut, I might be able to find them. But, you know, it's getting colder, so it's a bit harder. And the nests lately in Connecticut haven't been great at all. Like, I think a couple migrations ago, there were um, Kabuto nests and Ammonite nests around, so I could have went to them. But the difficulty with nests sometimes, especially here in Connecticut, is some of the actual nest places don't really spawn them that often, or there's not actually many spawn points there, or it's just such a small park or such a weird area that it's just not the greatest. Um, Hubbard Park, probably my favorite nest that I've been to in Connecticut, with some of the best spawns that I've had, has had like garbage for the past while too. It was like, I think right now it's like an Oddish nest or something like that. It was a Nidoran nest, then like a Vulpix nest. So it hasn't been anything incredible, and that's kind of why I guess I haven't been traveling around or playing quite as much. I'm also missing Dragonair, which I do have candies for, but still holding out to see if I can make a really good uh, Dragonite with great IVs. I have one that's over 80%, but the moveset isn't that great. Um, as far as baby Pokemon go, I did hatch a number of baby Pokemon during the event. Not all of them. I'm missing uh, Magby, Pichu, and what's the other one? Igglybuff. No, Cleffa. I'm missing Cleffa. So that's what I'm missing. Um, a lot of that is feasible and doable. I just, that hasn't been really the main focus. The main focus for me has been IVs. So if we take a look here, I have in my recent collection just a whole bunch of stuff that I've been saving up for evolutions. I got another 93% Nidoran here. Uh, in the last episode, I evolved that 98% Nidoran all the way to Nido Queen, hoping for a great moveset, and that kind of didn't really work out, but that's okay. Now we have a couple more in here, and we've got a lot of EVs that I don't think I'll be evolving today because I'm waiting for that Generation 2 with the potential Espeon and Umbreon evolutions, however they decide to implement those. I'm just going to save a lot of good EVs for that because I don't know uh, how is that's going to happen, if it's going to be a random evolution or not, and I think if it will be random, obviously I'm going to need a couple tries to be able to do that. So we've also got a nice Tentacool in here, 96% perfect, CP14 Ghastly. Um, a lot of you would probably cringe if I evolved that, but I'm going to evolve it anyway because I want to see if it gets the right moveset. I've been saving a lot of Ghastly candies ever since Halloween. I still have over 500. Um, Ghastlies are kind of common around here, but finding a really good Ghastly is very, very hard. And I do also have something really interesting. I think I might have passed it, actually. I got a second 100% perfect Bulbasaur. And uh, with the event, I was able to save up enough candies to evolve one of them but I'm going to need to visit a Bulbasaur nest in order to get enough candies for both. And I think that's going to be like a future episode I'll save both of those Bulbasaurs for, because I think it'd be kind of fun to evolve both of those together. Got a pretty nice Magnemite. So there's, there's just a bunch of stuff that I've been saving up in here that uh, I will be evolving. I did finally manage to catch a 93% Santa Pikachu right before the event ended. I um, was pretty lucky about that, because all of the Pikachus that I'd caught up to that point were really bad. The only other good one I caught was an 82%, I think, and um, I kind of don't want to evolve the 93% into the, the Santa Hat Raichu, or uh, Rykloz, a lot of people are calling it on Reddit. I think what I might do instead is evolve the 82% um, into the Santa Hat Raichu, which could be pretty fun. Oh, and also, if you take a look here, I actually have 90,000 Stardust, which is pretty rare for me. You can tell that I have not been uh, playing quite as much lately, because my Stardust a little while back was sitting around like 25,000. That was like the bare minimum where I wouldn't use any more of it. And um, I've clearly been saving up a lot. So I'm definitely ready to power some stuff up. Should we get some good movesets today? And obviously that is the hope. But of course, uh, you never know when it comes to Pokemon Go. So let's start this. Let's, um, let's see what we got. I caught this 87% Vulpix. I was gonna release it because it's just not that great, you know? Usually I like over 90%. But I went to transfer it, I was at a park one day, and 
that was the day that the servers actually went down. So I was trying to transfer it, and then the game crashed, and then I went to reopen it, couldn't log in, started having server errors, that's when everybody freaked out thinking that they were going to secretly throw in Gen 2 or something like that. So that was interesting, this guy, I guess, was just not meant to be transferred. Let's let's start off with this 93%, pretty high CP, and it ran. Open for that Poison Jab Stone Edge, or Poison Jab Earthquake, preferably. 888, that's a pretty good number. It's a pretty lucky number. Poison Jab, Earthquake. Poison Jab, Sludge Wave. Not great, not quite what I was looking for, but that's okay. I'm sure I'll find another, there's a million Nidorans here, it's, it's pretty common. Let's continue by evolving this guy so I actually did end up visiting a Vulpix nest, that's where this guy's from. Usually I would want 90% or above, but this is the best that I've got right now. And I do have plenty of Vulpix candy, so... I think what I'll actually do, even though I don't usually do this, is I will pop a Lucky Egg. Um, I should have done it in the beginning here, but... I'm not used to having Lucky Eggs. I actually only got these Lucky Eggs because of um, some of the special packages that they were offering for Christmas. But let's do it. Let's make ourselves a Nine Tails. Obviously, what we're looking for is Ember Fire Blast. Although I think um, I think the Dark type move, what is it, like Faint Attack that it gets as the Quick Attack? I think that one's not that bad, but Ember Fire Blast preferably. Come on, Ember Fire Blast. It's a good one. I have a I have good luck with like 89 percenters, like my Venusaur. I'm pretty happy with that. And next up, I could do that Ghastly there, which is, it's kind of a, of a big Ghastly, I might consider it, but I'm really looking for that over 90%. In the Halloween episode, I did end up evolving two Ghastlies that were over 90%. Both didn't quite end up with the correct moves. Today I'm gonna try again. And I know it's only CP14, but I gotta give it a chance. If it ends up with Shadow Claw Sludge Bomb, I will pay the price to power him up to be a top tier Gengar. Actually, let's, let's see what CP it becomes. 124. Okay. Let's go. Shadow Claw Sludge Bomb. Sucker Punch Sludge Bomb. <laughs> well. I'm probably not going to transfer him. He'll probably just be one of those funny Pokemon at the bottom of my list. But from there, let's go to this Paris here, 98%. Obviously what I'd be looking for is, what is it, Bug Bite? Bug Bite Solar Beam or Bug Bite X Scissor for sure. So can we get one of those? That's the thing about the high IVs, if you evolve a lot of these, like, not all of them end up with the right movesets, sometimes not many at all, which, which kind of stinks and it's kind of disheartening, but... It keeps me playing because I'll continue to catch more Pokemon in the search of the perfect Pokemon. Fury Cutter X Scissor is not quite the right combination, but they are both bug type moves, so I guess he's fine. If it was Bug by X Scissor, I would have gladly taken that. Next, we'll do this Magnemite here. I forget the um, good moves on Magnetons. It's like. I don't know if it's Spark Thundershock or Thundershock Thunderbolt. Spark Discharge. I know Discharge is not a good move, but actually I'm going to look that up really quickly just to confirm it. So Spark Discharge is not the best move set, not even close really, but it is 91% in terms of offensive capabilities. And they are both electric type attacks, which is decent, so I guess he's okay. Next we will do this side duck here. I've never gotten a proper gold duck. In fact, what is a proper gold duck? I think it's like Water Gun Hydro Pump. For some reason, I always end up with the weird, like, pseudo-psychic Golducks. Yeah, Water Gun Hydro Pump is what you want. Come on. Confusion Hydro Pump. I feel like I always get that one. For some reason, I always end up with the weird, like, pseudo-psychic Golducks. That's the worst thing, too, is when you evolve Pokemon numerous times, and you keep getting the same movesets on them. Like, at least give something different. Alright, this is a 93% male Nidoran. Um, I do already have a 93% Nido King that I evolved several episodes ago with the proper moveset, so really there's nothing 
too big banking on this. I just want to see what else I can get out of it. Fury Cutter Earthquake. Not quite, buddy. Alright, I wasn't expecting too much from that. I've got an Oddish. Should I do the Oddish? Let's go Voltorb first to that Electrode. And I want to take a look at what uh, the best moves for Electrode are, because I don't remember myself. Spark Thunderbolt. Although best on defense would be Tackle Thunderbolt. Interesting. Can we get that Spark Thunderbolt? Tackle Discharge. Ugh. Worst offensive moveset. 93% on the defensive, but when are you going to be leaving him on gyms? Ugh. Dude. 93% tentacle. The moveset that we want, I believe, is what? Poison Jab Hydro Pump? Um, I think Poison Jab Lizard is okay too, but Hydro Pump would be preferable. Poison Jab Hydro Pump. Poison Jab, Sludge Wave. I guess it's decent because they're both poison type moves, but not the best here happening. Okay, so unfortunately my camera just stopped recording while I evolved. Uh, the Electrode didn't end up with the proper moveset on that, and uh, I think that's all I did so far off camera. I'm going to be evolving this 93% Clefairy. If you've been watching the episodes on this channel for the past while, I have been looking for that Pound Moonblast Clefairy, and every single time, not so great things have happened. So I have this awesome... Clefairy that I caught today, 96%, really hoping for Pound Moonblast, Pound Psychic. Um, okay. I've been searching for the proper Pound Moonblast Clefairy for a long time now. Let's see if we can make it this one. Zen Headbutt Psychic. I think that's the best defensive, though, if I'm not mistaken. So, can we get it today? Please. Can this end my search for that Clefable? Pound Moon Blast. Thank you. Okay. Now that I actually wouldn't have any qualms about powering up. I probably will um, with some of that extra candy. So, so far, two proper movesets out of all these Pokemon, which isn't the greatest when you actually think about it, but it does keep me playing the game. It's that driving factor that keeps me going out and catching Pokemon, hoping for these good IV Pokemon that will end up with the proper movesets and will end up at the top of my team because there's still a lot of Pokemon that are some of my favorites from Gen 1 that I don't have the best versions of yet. Next, we're going to do this Ghastly. And this Ghastly is going to give me Shadow Claw Sludge Bomb. Shadow Claw, Sludge Bomb. Sucker Punch, Dark Pulse. It's unfortunate, too, because the CP is really high. Double Dark move set, so I guess it might have its utility in some cases, but darn it. Can't win them all, I guess. All right, it's time for Raichu, Santa Claus, Pikachu, especially because it's going to be a limited edition type of item, unless they do it again next year, but let's do it. There was this really cool glitch early on where Something about if you scrolled around, the physics of the actual Santa Claus hat itself would kind of freak out. Something about like turning your phone upside down. Hey, there we go. See, I knew it. This is why I didn't want to evolve the 93% because it ended up with Brick Break, which is awful and not what I wanted. But you know what? For my only Raichu Santa Claus hat in the collection, I guess that's okay. That's precisely why I was worried about evolving the 93%, so I'm glad that I didn't do that. 96% Nidoran. Bite Earthquake. Again, isn't that the second time? I think the 98% one ended up with that. Ugh. The hunt continues. Oh yeah, special day. I've also got this 100% Pidgey. So I'm looking for that Wing Attack Hurricane. I actually managed to find this guy right down the street from where I live. 100%. It's probably my... Gee, what is it? So I've got the 100% Dodrio, 100% Executor, 200% Bulbasaur's, this 100% Pidgey. So I have a handful of 100% Pokemon. Can we do Wing Attack Hurricane, 100% Pidgeot? Please? 
That would be awesome. Steel Wing Hurricane. 100% defensive moveset, so I guess it could have been far worse, but not quite the correct moveset for 100%. He's staying, though, not getting rid of him. Let's do an Oddish to a Vile Plume. Um, I do have a really good 93% already with Razor Leaf Solar Beam, but just for kicks and giggles, I'm going to evolve this one. So as you can see, I've been collecting a massive horde of over 90% Pokemon to do this kind of huge evolution episode. The last time was a little bit smaller for New Year's. I just had a handful of stuff. This has been everything that I've gotten within the past while. It's fun to hold on to because you feel like you have a lot of good stuff, but then when you evolve them, half of them or more are not quite as good, so... Acid Solar Beam, that's actually the highest DPS. Okay, I will gladly take that, and it is one CP away from being elite Vile Plume. Okay, so that's a good one. Got a couple good ones so far tonight. Do we do the Charmander? Let's do the Charmander. So this Charmander is from the starter event that we had right around this new year. 96% um, was the highest Charmander I was able to find. Obviously I have a decent amount of candy, not, not an insane amount. And the best Charizard I have actually before, before I do that, let's go by number in the Pokedex. Best Charizard I have is 605. It was actually 585 in the Stonington Burrow episode when we caught this Charizard, which you can check out up here. Um, so this is kind of a sentimental value Charizard. Also has the best moveset, which is pretty cool. And uh, the other one we have I uh, caught also during this event, but it was obviously a very tiny Charizard from down the road. Let's go. So obviously what we are looking for is Wing Attack Fire Blast. I will take Ember Fire Blast, maybe even Ember Flamethrower. Something good, please. I actually ended up catching my first Charmeleon from this starter event as well, because I still didn't have one. I was waiting for a good Charmander to evolve, so at this point it doesn't really matter, but I did get one, which is kind of cool. Wing Attack Fire Blast. Wing Attack Flamethrower. I guess I can't really be mad at that, right? Decent. Whatever, Charizard was never my starter anyway. Oh, 98% Weedle. Let's go for that Beedrill. And I'm actually stupid, I don't have enough candy. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Well, we're gonna leave that there then. I will evolve that at some point later. Level 29. Not the greatest rewards. Still have about 7 minutes or so left in that lucky egg, so I'm gonna catch this Nidoran here just for experience sake. But that's going to cut it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please let me know in the comment section down below if you're still playing Pokemon Go, if you're still hunting for certain Pokemon or expecting Generation 2 any day now. Let me know if you've gotten your Go Plus, if you're interested in owning a Go Plus, even though some of the recent changes have made it slightly less effective or less useful. I'm also going to be releasing a lot of new and different content to this channel within the coming days. Fire Emblem has been something that I've been meaning to get back to for a long time. And because of Pokemon Go and my interest kind of jumped from that series to Pokemon last summer, my Fire Emblem content just stopped abruptly. So I will be returning and resuming the Fire Emblem Conquest series, uh, even if we lose units, even if no matter what happens, I just I want to finish that series and wrap it up. Because I've started a lot of things with this channel that I haven't finished or continued, so definitely expect that. There were a lot of great Fire Emblem announcements that happened recently, so I'm really excited about some of the new games and stuff coming out. With that in the future, I think maybe I'll do like a Fire Emblem mobile series or something like that. Well, let's see what happens. It's called Fire Emblem Heroes. But definitely be sure to let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts. Slash that thumbs up down below if you did appreciate this episode. Subscribe if you haven't already to Lucky Crit for more Nintendo retro tech content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.